first graders, it's Mrs. Saul, and I'm here with another read aloud video lesson for you today. Um, we're going to be reading a book called The Invisible Boy, and this book was written by Trudy Ludwig, and it's illustrated by Patrice Barton. Now, before we read, let's take a look at the cover here. Well, the picture I see here is a boy. It looks like he's drawing with chalk, maybe, on the ground, and I'm guessing that he's the boy that this title is talking about because it says boy in the title. So that's a pretty good guess. Um, but it says, the title says he's invisible. Well, I know invisible means that no one can see you, that you're not visible to anybody. Now, I'm wondering, is he really invisible? Hmm. Well, I never heard of anybody who was really invisible, so I'm not sure. I think I'm gonna have to read to find out. So let's listen to The Invisible Boy. The Invisible Boy. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. So take a close look here. I think this is Brian right here. Hmm. He does look kind of invisible. I'm still not sure if he's really invisible or if the author means something else. I think I have to keep reading. But I do notice that even Miss Carlotti, Mrs. Carlotti, I think that's Brian's teacher. She looks like the teacher. They're in a classroom here. Says she has trouble noticing him in her classroom because she's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. Oh, well, let's look at Nathan and Sophie. Nathan and Sophie look like they're yelling or jumping up and down. Like Nathan really looks like he's yelling. His mouth is wide open. Hmm. I think what the author means here is that Nathan and Sophie are, are taking up a lot of the teacher's attention. It looks like because her hand is kind of out, she's trying to tell them that they need to quiet down okay because they look like they're yelling Nathan has problems with what mrs. Carlotti calls volume control he uses his outside voice inside too much well I think we were correct here they are again close-up pictures of those two kids that were in line and look at them it tells us now the author tells us Nathan has a problem with voice control or volume control that means he forgets that when you're inside, you have to lower your voice. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Ooh. I know it's hard when you don't get your way sometimes, but that's not always a good idea to whine about it. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. All right, so the author said here that Nathan and Sophie are taking up a lot of space and I want to think about what that means for a minute Okay, um, I know that when things take up a lot of space that means they're usually big Right, so if you got a pet elephant You would need a lot of space to keep an elephant because they are very big. They take up a lot of space um, But I don't think that's what the author means here now remember when I looked on this page, when we were looking at this page here, Nathan and Sophie look the same size as all the other kids. So I don't think that's what the author means. I don't think she means that they're bigger than the other kids. So I need to think a little bit more about this. I'm going to look at the pictures here. I see like a lot of little lines around them. And I noticed it also on this page. Do you notice that? Look around Sophie and Nathan. I know it's hard. There's a little bit of a glare on my book, but you can see all these lines coming off of them. I think that because they're being loud, Nathan has is very loud, his volume is loud, and Sophie is, is whining, I think it means that their actions, the way they're acting, are taking up a lot of space, okay? Nathan talks too loud. Sophie whines when she's not happy. 
uh, I think they're taking a lot of the teacher's attention because she always probably has to give them reminders about making smart choices. We all need reminders sometimes. So I think that's what they mean. I don't think the author means that they're big. I think they that the author means they take up space and they take up the teacher's attention. That's what that means. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball team. Oh, this is fun. So at recess time, they're gonna play kickball. The best players get picked first. Hmm. Then the best friends of the best players. Then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. So friends, everyone has gotten picked for a team. You know, I'm not sure that these students are picking teams in a very fair way. It said that the best players get picked first and then their friends and then the friends of the friends. So people who don't have many friends are getting picked last. That makes me sad. Now, Brian doesn't really look sad. Look, he has a smile on his face still, but I think I would feel really sad if I was the last person picked. And picking a team based on who you're friends with is not really the most fair way to do it. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. Oh my goodness. Friends, things are getting worse now. I felt sad on the page before. Now I feel really sad. So now they've left Brian out of the game completely. So the kid who was supposed to pick a player next for a team said he looked at Brian and then he looked back at everybody else and he said, I think we have, we have enough players. We can play. So Brian didn't get picked for any team. Oh my goodness. How do you think Brian is feeling here? Take a look at him. He was smiling before. Not so much now. Take a look. And then I want you to turn and tell someone next to you, or if there's no one next to you, think about it in your head. How do you think Brian is feeling in this part of the story right now? Three, two, one. All right, I think that Brian is feeling really sad and probably feeling really left out not getting picked for a team when you want to play a game and knowing that everybody else got picked, that must make you feel so awful inside. He's sad. He's probably hurt. He has hurt feelings. Oh no, this book is making me feel pretty sad right now. I hope that it starts to get happier. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did, except for Brian. He wasn't invited. Oh, poor Brian. Friends, I almost feel a little bit like I want to cry right now. I feel so sad for Brian. So he is totally left out of this conversation. He's sitting at the table with all of these people. He's listening to everything they're saying about being at the party. And it seems like everyone at the table was at that party except for Brian. Oh my goodness. I'm so sad here because I think that I'm starting to notice here with the other pictures so far we've seen in the book. Did you notice this too? Brian doesn't have any color. Do you see how everybody in the class has, you could see what color their shirts are and their pants and their hair and their faces. But look at Brian, he has no color on him. I'm gonna go back and just double check if, if I, I'm correct. Yep, no color here. 
None there. None here or on the first page, I don't think. Nope. Friends, I think I'm starting to understand why Brian has no color and why this book is called The Invisible Boy. I think maybe that is the illustrator and the author are trying to show us that Brian doesn't seem to be noticed by anybody else. His teacher has a hard time noticing him because she's so busy worrying about kids who she has to speak to about their behavior. And his friends in school don't seem to notice him so much. He doesn't get invited to parties or picked to be on teams. I can't even imagine what that feels like. That's awful. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at the table doing what he loves best. He draws fire-breathing dragons, scaling tall building, buildings. Here it is. Thank you for toasting my marshmallow. This is what that guy is saying. That's reaching out the window of the building he drew with the dragon on top. He has a marshmallow on a stick. <laughs> He's a really good artist, right? Look at that dragon. That's amazing. He drew space aliens locked in intergalactic battles. I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasure. Crackers? Arr! Yay! <laughs> And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. Hi. Hi, friend. Have a cookie. Okay, so take a look at these pictures here. All very um, great imagination kind of pictures. Brian is imagining these things. This one down here, though, is interesting to me. Take a look at the superhero he drew. So the superhero has a big B on his chest. And he kind of looks like somebody in our story. He kind of looks like Brian. And it's interesting because it says he drew superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. I think Brian realizes that it's not easy for him to make friends. So he's actually drawing a picture of himself. He's imagining, wow, I wish I was like this and I could make friends wherever I went with everyone. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. Hmm. Now, take a look. Take a look at Brian here. Do you notice anything different? Because I noticed something. Look on the side of his face right here. Did you notice that? He looks a little different to me. It looks like he has a little color on his face. Hmm. I think maybe the illustrator is trying to show us that something has changed here in Brian, okay? I think that because Justin arrived, that maybe Brian is hoping that Justin will notice him and they'll be friends. Interesting. I'm feeling happy about this. I hope that this is a good sign for Brian and that he has a new friend in class. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? Asks Madison as she points at Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Oh boy, take a look. So look at Madison's face. She looks a little bit kind of disgusted by what um, Justin is eating, called bulgogi. And the kids laugh, all of them, that is, except Brian. Bulgogi, it's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you wanna try some? There's no way. I'd eat boogergy. Oh boy, this is not nice. So here, Justin has explained what his food is. That sounds pretty good to me. Korean barbecued beef sounds delicious. But I guess it's something that these kids are not used to seeing. 
friends, I'm having a text to text connection right now because this part of the story here is reminding me of another story we read earlier this year called the sandwich swap. If you remember that story, you might remember that the two girls in that story were best friends, but they both didn't really like what the other one would have for lunch. And finally, one day they said something, remember, and they both were saying ew about each other's lunches and they got into an argument. And that's reminding me of this right now because it seems that Justin is eating something that most kids aren't eating at lunch and they think it's weird. And they're kind of making fun of it a little bit and saying, ooh, I would never eat that. He even called it, instead of bulgogi, like it's supposed to be called, he called it boogergi. That's not nice. So all of the kids laughed at that, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse being laughed at or feeling invisible. Wow. Boys and girls, I'm gonna stop for a second. I want you to think about that. Think about what Brian is thinking about right now. He's wondering, is it better that kids don't even pay attention to me or even see me or notice me or let me play or invite me to things? Or is it worse to be made fun of? Think about that for a minute. Talk to somebody next to you if someone's there. Three, two, one. Okay, so that's a hard question, friends. And it's really a personal question. I don't know what's worst. Sometimes I think maybe, or I'm thinking in this situation, maybe it's better that people aren't noticing me than they're making fun of me. Because that doesn't feel good either. Being ignored doesn't feel good, and being made fun of doesn't feel good. They both are pretty stinky choices. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Oh, wow. So here's Justin. He's in his cubby and he notices that he has a piece of paper with his name on it. And um, let's see if we can see what that said. Okay, let's see what his paper said. It says, Justin, I thought bulgogi looked good. Brian, and he drew a picture, it says yum. Look at that. So Brian wrote, I'm sorry, there's such a glare on this book today. Brian wrote Justin a note and told him he thought his lunch looked good, the bulgogi looked good. And what a cute picture he made. He made, it looks like himself. It looks like Brian drew himself eating bulgogi and saying yum. Let's stop and think again for a minute here. Do you think that Brian would be a good friend if others gave him a chance, if they actually tried to be his friend? Stop and think about that for a minute. Why or why not? Why would he be a good friend or why wouldn't he? Turn and talk to somebody or just think in your head. Three, two, one. Here's what I was thinking. Maybe it's the same as you, but I, I think Brian would be a really good friend. I mean, here he just showed what he would do if his friend was sad. He's not even friends with Justin, yet he went out of his way to write him a note and draw him a nice picture to make him feel better. He knew Justin was sad about what happened in the cafeteria. And he, he did something to make him feel better. That's an example of what a good friend does. So I think Brian would be a great friend to have. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing right away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. Thanks for the note. Oh. Hey, Justin! Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next! Sorry, I, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Oh my goodness, friends, this made me happy. Justin came and talked to Brian and take a look at the pictures. <gasps> 
Do you see even more color on Brian now? Look at that, look at his clothes. Even his face has a little bit of color. I think the author and the illustrator here are trying to show us that Brian is finally feeling noticed and he's feeling a little bit less invisible. Somebody came and talked to him. This is the first time in the story that another person in his class had has come to talk to him. So he's they're trying to show us, wow, maybe people do notice me. I'm so happy for Brian right now. And I think that he and Justin are going to be friends. That's my prediction I'm making. I think they are gonna turn out to be friends. Let's keep reading and find out. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asked the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. Oh boy. This is kind of like picking teams again. She's letting the kids pick who they're going to work with. So here goes Brian. He's about to go talk to Justin, but look at his face. <gasps> he looks like, oh, and it says, I'm already with Justin, says Amelia. Find someone else. Hmm. Well, that's not so good. Let's see what happens. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Oh, well, you know what that tells me? He wants to disappear. He feels awful. Here he was finally being brave and going, you know, about to walk up to Justin to say, hey, would you be my partner? And somebody else kind of came along and said, nope, I'm his partner. Oh, Mrs. Carlotti said, we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Oh, look at all the color has come back. Or not all of it, but a lot of it has come into Justin. Somebody has just basically stood up for him and noticed him and said, well, that's sad. He wanted to be my partner, but somebody else asked, but we can be three. The teacher said you can be have partners of two or three. So he's even more colorful now. That makes me happy. Mrs. Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have some fun. So here's the photograph that they have to draw about. It looks like it's some buildings. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think live in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. Oh, and goodness, friends, look at this. Brian is now in full color. Everything, look. His face, his shirt, his hair. I know. It's because right now, Brian, for the first time in this whole story, is feeling like he's part of a group. Finally, he doesn't feel invisible. This makes my heart happy. Does it make your heart happy? I'm so happy for Brian right now. Oh, you know what? There's no words on this page for me to read. Should I just skip this page? We'll just go to the next one. All right. No, we shouldn't skip the page. We have to look closely. There's no words. That means that the author and the illustrator want us to really look at the pictures to figure out what's going and going on and try to tell it ourselves. So let's take a look at this first one. Well, here I see Brian and um, Emilio and Justin, and it looks like they're looking at the photograph the teacher gave them, and it looks like they're talking about it. So I think right here, maybe they're discussing what they're going to do in their project. Now take a look at the next one. Here I see scissors and I see a pencil and paper and um, I think it, oh, there's glue and there are lots of scraps on the floor. They must not have a tidy tub in their class to put their garbage in. So they have a lot of scraps on the floor. It looks like they are now working together on their project. Now let's take a look over here. Now it looks like they are presenting their project. They're holding up the th um, things, they're holding up pictures, they, have, they even have some um, 
costumes they made themselves, some hats and an eye patch. So it looks like here, because they're standing by this board, it looks like to me, like maybe they're sharing it with their class here. Wow. Friends, it certainly looks like Brian and Justin and Emilio are working really well together on these pages. It's lunchtime again. Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Ugh. Heartbreaking. Brian! He hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over here! Oh. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. So, friends, finally, Justin is, I mean, I'm sorry, Brian is walking into lunch, his least favorite part of the day, and he's feeling good about it. Somebody called him over and asked him to sit with them. Normally, he sits at the table with everybody, but no one talks to him or pays attention to him. I'm so happy right now. Maybe. Just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. <gasps> Cookie? Thanks. Oh, friends, you know what I just realized? Remember when Brian, we were learning how he's a really good artist and he would spend time doing his favorite activity of drawing? Remember he drew himself as a superhero who was could make friends wherever he goes? And in the picture, somebody he was offering somebody a cookie. Remember that? And look, it's happened. In his real life, someone is offering him a cookie. It seems Brian has made a real friend here. Guys, I think that this book had a really important message for everyone. Everybody wants to be noticed. Everybody wants to feel included. And friends, it's really, really important that we take time to notice when someone is looking sad or when we see someone is being left out. So I know right now you're home with your families and you're not really getting to spend time with your friends, especially not at school, but I think this is a lesson we all need to remember for our whole lives, whether we're adults or we're kids. It's important to notice when others are feeling left out. It's important to make sure that we reach out to people who maybe feel alone or feel invisible. Sometimes just saying a few kind words like, oh, I like your shirt. Just something like that can make a huge difference in someone's day. And asking somebody to play or to join you or to sit by you can make a huge difference too. It's just a little tiny thing you can do. Smiling at someone is another way. I want you to talk to someone next to you or think for a minute. What else can you do to make somebody feel like they're not invisible or to include somebody? Think for a minute. What else could you do to make somebody feel good and feel like you notice them? Three, two, one. Well, I think that one way to include people is to ask you to join them, to sit by them, um, or to sit by you, I should say. That would be another way. So maybe if I went into the lunchroom or maybe I was somewhere else and maybe at a party and I noticed somebody was sitting by themselves, I could ask them to come sit by me or I could go sit by them. So that would be a way. I hope you came up with some good ideas and I hope that you remember how important it is um, to include people and make them feel like they're not invisible. Boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed that story and I will see you again soon. Until then, have a good day. Bye.